Hi, I'm uh, Chad Justice. I'm at uh, K-Scope 13 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm with Tom Kite of Oracle. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, Chad. Thanks. So we, uh, we've, we've had a big announcement today. Uh, do you care to share that with us? Well, uh, Oracle 12C has finally been released. It's generally available. It showed up on eDelivery a little while ago, and uh, we'll be getting it on otn.oracle.com, so you'll be able to hit the documentation, get the software, and start playing with the next release. Wow, it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. So what is your favorite feature of the, the latest and greatest 12C? That's always a hard question to answer because it depends on what problem you have to solve. Like if I said data redaction is the coolest feature ever, mm -hmm. but you don't really care about data redaction, it wouldn't resonate with you. So right. there's just so many things. Uh, a couple that pop to mind are the new multi-tenant architecture, a big architectural change for the database, the first one in almost 25 years. Uh, things like data redaction, a, a pretty important security feature, allows us to mask information as it's leaving the database, going back to a client application. And then there's simple little things like uh, usability features, like an identity type, just being able to have a primary key auto-increment without having to create a sequence, without having to create a trigger that finds the sequence to the column, uh, similar to the way other databases have implemented. So ease of use, but also a, a migration tool as well. Okay, yeah, and I'm gonna think of a few people that would appreciate the no sequence or the auto increment type uh, mm -hmm. value. I've, I've uh, been known to mess that up on a number of occasions. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the, what is the pluggable database? What does that mean for the, I guess, the, for, for the DBA types out there? Yeah, well, first of all, the multi-tenant architecture for the developer is not going to be a very exciting feature because right. our goal was to make it so that a developer wouldn't even know that we did this. Okay. So from an application level perspective, there should be no changes to the application. But from a DBA perspective, this really changes things. Uh, if you're running 20 or 30 Oracle instances on a single server right now, you know, you've done some server consolidation. Right you have a maintenance nightmare, sort of a, a headache. You've got 20 or 30 separate databases that all have to be upgraded, patched, monitored, tuned, backed up, data guarded, racked, whatever you're doing. Right. right? And you've got to do everything 20 or 30 times. With the multi-tenant architecture, there would be one Oracle instance. So instead of having, with 30 instances, somewhere between 600 and 1,000 processes just to run the databases, mm -hmm. we'll have 20 to 40 processes to run an instance, and we'll be able to plug in and open all 30 databases simultaneously under this one instance. So now there's one instance to patch, to upgrade, to manage, to monitor, to tune, to rack, to data guard. So instead of doing everything 20 to 30 times, the DBAs will be doing it once. Wow, so that's going to save quite a bit of, or, or free up data, DBAs to do other things. Yeah, because we've added a whole bunch of new stuff in 12C that they're going to have to manage, monitor, <laughs> tune, adjust, learn, and, and play with. Okay. So w one of the ways that we've, Kellen Popvan uh, is here. She's a big advocate of EM12C. Uh, those all, I assume those all tie in really well together. Oh yeah, and you'll see new capabilities coming in future Enterprise Manager releases to take specific advantage of the new 12C capabilities, but it's really been gearing up towards that database consolidation, provisioning databases, you know, with the new pluggable database ar architecture infrastructure, creating a database is an also almost instantaneous operation because the instance is already running, the software is already installed, okay. the data dictionary is already there. Creating a new pluggable database is not a huge deal. Like creating a database in 11G was mm -hmm. a huge deal. It was a new instance. It was something you had to set up a new backup script for, set up all the init.or parameters for. All of that stuff's taken care of at the, this one container level allocating this new database is a rather small operation so a developer comes along and wants to sort of requisition a database provision the database it, it becomes a simple push button operation and something that happens instantaneously and something that doesn't take a great deal of, of resources like it used to in the past okay is it is it safe to, to compare the pluggables to basically the schema consolidation it's somewhat fair 
but this is so much better. Okay. Okay. And in schema consolidation, if I had 20 applications and I tried to consolidate them into a single database instance, mm -hmm. which in the past would be my chosen path if at all possible, least amount of resources right. and, and manageability features and everything else like that. Um, doing the schema consolidation though is really difficult because you could only have one public synonym X in that database. And if you have 20 applications, mm. there's probably a namespace conflict. There might even be a schema name conflict. And if one of those databases said, ooh, I need this optimizer parameter set to this value, and somebody else said, I need it set to this opposing value, you couldn't really consolidate those guys. Okay. With the pluggable database infrastructure, with the multi-tenant mm -hmm. offering, you have the ability to have two separate PDBs, pluggable databases, one for each application. They can both have the Scott schema in them. They're separate Scott schemas. Right. And they can both have the EMP table inside of them, and they can both have a public synonym EMP for Scott.EMP. Right. There is no namespace conflict anymore because they have their separate namespaces. And furthermore, there's a physical barrier between them. Just because we're plugged into the same instance doesn't mean I can see your data and you can see my data. You have a set of schemas associated with your users, with right. their privileges. They don't necessarily have the ability to come in and look at my data. It's physically walled off. And if they wanted to, we would have to set up a database link between these two pluggable databases. Even though they're not separate instances, we'll still be using database links, that, that syntax, to say, I want to query this data from this database and join it to this database. Okay. So we have that, that physical segregation between them. Because that was another barrier to schema consolidation, is one business unit might say, there's no way you're putting my data next to this other business unit. Okay. I don't want my bits and bytes mingling with their bits and bytes. Right. I need them to be separate and secure. Okay. And so with the multi-tenant architecture, we, we have that. Okay. Um, so each of the pluggable data, I mean, I, so I should probably start to think of it as in 11G terms or before as an instance or a, a database. Yeah, going forward to a developer thinking about this, Think about a database in the same way you've always thought about a database. Okay? But now there's economies of scale. In the past, if a developer came to me and said, hey, I want to create a new database for my application, I would push back and say, I'd really like you to create that as a schema in this already existing database so that I have less databases to manage. Right. Now I'm not afraid to give them their own database because it's not an all-consuming resource thing. I, I don't have to set up a backup policy for it. I've already got that done. It's done at the container database level. I don't, if, if I want it to be data guarded, that's already done because I plug it into a database that's already been configured for data guard. Okay. Right? So I don't have that high startup cost of creating a database and managing it long term. So all of a sudden, creating a database becomes something that will be very natural. You won't get the pushback from the DBA anymore. Which is always an issue for the developers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how about problem uh, tuning, maybe? Uh, how is, is there going to be a different approach, or is pretty much all that transparent now? So there's, you know, uh, there's varying tools that we can use to access uh, the performance views. Um, are those going to be done at the container level, or will those be done at the pluggable level? Well, there's a couple of different levels of tuning. First, there's instance tuning, which DBAs do, and they use AWR, stats pack like reports, and that's instance wide. And so we'll be running those reports at the container level, which has visibility across all the PDBs, mm -hmm. which is what you want. And so now we have one instance to tune at the instance level instead of 20. Okay, so from that perspective, the DBA job would be a little bit easier. Then going down the stack, there's application and session tuning. That's ASH AWR information. And the ASH information is at the session, at the application level. And so that's what a developer will be using to tune their application, which runs in a PDB. Okay. So they'll have insight into their own session information and be able to tune at that level. DBA will work at the instance level. So in effect, there really won't be a change because that's the way things operate now. Okay. It's just that the DBA will be able to see across databases, which would be really nice, and they can actually resource manage across those databases now. Like today, if you run three databases in a machine, there's not too much stopping instance one from consuming all of the CPU, right. I.O., and memory resources on that machine. 
yeah, we, we have some things like CPU instance caging and things, but that's at a very aggregate gross level. With the pluggable databases, we can give each database a share of the resources in that machine. Uh, application one, you get one share. Application two, you get two shares. And application three, you get one share. So we'll just pretend there's four shares to be shared across the machine, and that right. means applications one and three get about 25% of the resources each, and application two gets about 50%. But we'll actively be able to resource manage over those databases across them. That's something we can't do today in the instance per database architecture. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. Um, case you go to a ton of conferences over the year or throughout the year. Uh, Kscope, you're always at Kscope though. You, you're, you're very helpful. You're very supportive of Kscope. Is is there a <laughs> is there a reason? I mean, it, does Kscope stand out to you? Well, you have it in New Orleans a lot, which is a great place to hang out. Right? Uh, last year was Texas. That was really, really hot. Next year, I understand, it's going to be in a much cooler location, yes. temperature-wise, so that would be good. But it's a really great conference because it's one of the few, few developer-focused conferences. So a lot of conferences I go to are, frankly, more geared towards the DBAs. If you look at the agendas, mm -hmm. it's instance tuning, it's, hey, what are these latches, and how to tune these locks and things like that. Right. Uh, here it's focused on developers and developer tools. I am a developer. Surprise. I'm not a DBA. I've never been a DBA. I never want to be a DBA. Right. So being able to come to a conference where it's all about development is a refreshing change. Here the developers outnumber the DBAs and that's hugely unusual. And they're talking about the tools and programming best practices and how to use the database not how to avoid the database and, <laughs> and things like that. So it, it's a good change and the conference is about the right length. Uh, it, it's long enough that people can, you know, they're taking the week off to come right, here. Right. They're making a commitment. Right? It's not just an afternoon, it's not a day, right. like lots of them are. And uh, you know, just look around here at the floor today, there's, there's a lot of vendors here, a lot of great networking that goes on, so yeah, it's a good show. Excellent. So. Today we've learned uh, that 12C is generally available mm -hmm. and that Tom Kite is not a DBA, he is a developer. So Tom, thank you very much. I, I just, appreciate just your time. Oh. One extra thing. Uh, now that 12C is GA, go to otn.oracle.com, click on the documentation library and go to the 12C documentation library, even if you're not going to use 12C for two or three years. Start getting comfortable with some of the new features out there. Read through the new features guide. Read chapter one of every document because it's the what's new in or what's changed in this database version. And in fact, if you haven't done that for 11G yet, go ahead and do that first, right? And that will give you a good overview of all of the new capabilities. And the documentation's out there, it's free, and it is a really good source of information. It is how I learned what is new in 12C. So I read through the beta documentation, asked questions, played with the software, and that's how I get to know how all these features are implemented. Okay. So three things. 12C, not a DBA, read the documentation. Thank you. Tom, thank you very much. Great.